Okay, today, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Simple. Like yesterday. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice is found 192 times in the Bible in 183 verses. Now, evermore, we have the definition from Webster's 1828 Dictionary, always, eternally, always. So rejoice always, ever, is today's Bible verse, today's short little study. Let me give you some examples. Mondays. Oh, it's Monday. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice as if it was Friday. Now, who gave us rejoice evermore? Paul. He suffered shipwrecks. He was hated by his brethren, the Jews. He was hated by the church. He was persecuted. He was whipped. Not only did he fast, but he, he went without food. He was stoned, and he writes, rejoice evermore. Who did he write to? Thessalonica. Thessalonica was, was under great persecution. And he writes to him, rejoice evermore. And I'm going to tell you, as a Christian myself, I don't always... In, uh, Apply my life to this verse. Not being completely honest, there are times I gripe and complain. That's not rejoicing evermore. Rejoice evermore. Oh, yeah, I got a raise. I got the job. I got the car. I got the money. The, 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 look at all the grocery bags. Rejoice evermore is you lost the job, you didn't get the raise, you got balled out by your boss, the car is breaking down, and listen, i got to be careful here because because i got to watch what I preach, but I, I'm teaching from the Bible, rejoice evermore. And sometimes it's hard to do what the Bible says to do. I'm a widower twice. I had two wives die in, in the hospital care of cancer. And I've got to say, to a point, I did rejoice because they, when they died and went to glory into heaven, they are not in pain no more. When they were in great pain. And I rejoice that their suffering is gone. They've gone to heaven. But then again, I did not rejoice because I missed them. I loved them. Still do. Uh, I'm an impatient person. And I'd be lying before God if I did. I would, I'm not rejoicing in, in Daytona Beach where I go from point A to point B and back to point A. I hit every single red light. I'm not rejoicing evermore. And you and I, when we open up the water bill and it's 30, 40 bucks more than it was last night, we don't, hey, look at that, more water. <laughs> Maybe if you got a swimming pool or now I've never had the new, I said both my wife with cancer and I've been in both, one was in the doctor's office and the other one was in the hospital room when the doctor came in and said it's cancer. Oh, amen. No. That's not an amen. 
bad news doesn't bring amen. And yet Paul tells us to rejoice evermore. And there are times, listen, when we get that bad news, and I, I can go on about the good news and the great things, but look at the bad news. Yeah, there has been a tragic event in our in life. Yeah, there has become bad news in our life. <coughs> but every tragic event, every bad news, God is in it. God has allowed, whether it is he himself doing it, whether it be the devil doing it, or it's our own fault. And if you are a saved child of God, God is in it. At the moment of bad news or tragic news or Monday or a red light, our God, our Savior, say, well, okay, that's it. I'm getting off the bus now. The rest of this trip on this bus, son, God speaking to his children, daughter, I'm getting off and you go through it and I'll, I'll meet you later at the coffee shop. That's not God. And there'll be tragedy and there'll be bad moments and there'll be bad news in time. And I've had this happen. And, and you take it as a bus ride. And as God is the pilot, not the co-pilot, he is driving the bus. He better be driving that bus. And you're sitting there and you look in the bus and there's no one there. God is there. And you will have your bad moments and, and trials and tribulations and trouble. And you will look to the right and you will look to the left and there's no one there. If I if I had a nickel for every Christian, I'll be there. We're friends and, and I, well, where are you? Job had three friends. Miserable friends. And God was still there. And God heard the whole conversation. Because at the end, he says to about the three friends, hey, you guys were wrong. You better bring a sacrifice to Job. God is there. <clears throat> the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. Why is evil first? Listen, we live in a sin, curse, sor uh, uh, sorrowful world. Adam and Eve took the fruit that God warned them not to take the fruit. And the moment that they took the fruit and ate the fruit, the devil disappeared. You know that? And they sew fig leaves together. And who shows up? God. God showed up. And God knew full well what Adam did. Adam caused his trouble. God didn't say, all right, those two people I made, those two human beings, they, <coughs> they blew it. Now, you can't say because of that Adam and Eve never had a rejoicing moment. They had two children born, three children born. There's going to be trials and troubles and problems. But remember, God's in it. God is in it with you. Rejoice in that, that God will give you the victory. Rejoice everyone. Sometimes it's hard. Remember, God is in it.